1951, a young man left home from a little village in India known as Michael Puttinam in search of his dreams of serving God as a priest. At a tender age, he left his family, his relations, his friends and all the villagers whom he grew up with to answer the call of God to serve him. He was Iridium Singarayar Sebastian James, a young lad aged 13 years. His pastoral journey took him to the city of Medan, Indonesia, the home to Graha Maria Anne Velangani. Known for its unique structure and healing powers, it has become the icon of Medan. It is hard to believe that this magnificent structure was conceptualized and built by one man. This is the miraculous story of how the young James, now known as Father James Bharadaputra, fulfilled God's dream of building Graha Maria Anne Velangani in Medan. James was born on the 3rd of July 1938 and grew up in a village of farmers. He received his early education in Michael Puttenham, located approximately 40 kilometers from Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. He grew up in an environment of poverty and hardship, but amongst a God-fearing community. Other than farming, the church was what brought the families of the village together. Through the activities of the church and the influence of the priest, nuns, his devout parents and villagers, James was attracted to become a priest. James <laughs> இப்ப அவங்க வந்து சிறு பிள்ளையா இருக்கும்போதே ரொம்ப எங்களுடைய உறவுகள் எல்லாம் உறவுக்கெல்லாம் ஆண் குழந்தை ரொம்ப இல்ல ரெட்டே ரெட்டு பேர் தான் இருந்தாங்க அதனால அப்ப அந்த காலம் ரொம்ப கஷ்டமான காலம் எங்க அம்மா கிட்ட பால் இல்ல எங்க அண்ணே வந்து நிறைய பேர்ட பால் குடிச்சு வளந்தவங்க தான் அதனால அவங்க சொல்வாங்க அதனால கடவுளே என்னை எல்லா நிலையிலயே சமாளிக்க தெரிஞ்சுவாங்க <laughs> ஆனா அதெல்லாம் கூட அதையும் தாண்டி சரி ஏதோ கடவுள் அவனுக்குன்னு வச்சிருந்திருக்காரு சரி சரி விடுங்க அது வந்து கடவுள் பார்த்துக்குருவார் அப்படிங்கிற சொல்லக்கூடிய சூழ்நிலை தான் இருக்கும் ஒரு மாதிரி ரொம்ப கோவமா பேசி அவனை வரக்கூடாதுன்னு தண்டுது அந்த இதெல்லாம் அவகிட்ட பார்க்கவே முடியாது The young James left the village after standard 8 as there was no secondary school in the village James attended the St. Mary's Higher Secondary School in Dindigal. While studying in St. Mary's Higher Secondary School, James was in contact and became popular with the Jesuit priests, teaching in schools and the American missionaries who came to study Tamil so they could serve in Sri Lanka. James was impressed with the strength of the faith of these missionaries who had left their homes to come to an unknown land to spread the good news of God in a language that they were not familiar with. This inspired James further to not only become a priest but a Jesuit priest. Having mixed with the Jesuit priests, missionaries and having studied in a Jesuit school, he appreciated the Jesuit way of life, their spirit dedication and the special qualities they possessed. When asked why he chose to become a Jesuit, he answered, 
Their way of life inspired me to be one of them. In 1955, after completing his 12th standard, he went to St. Joseph's College in Trichy to do his intermediate studies before he was accepted in 1957 as a novice at Beshi College, which is now known as Beshi Ilam. After two years of rigorous training, he underwent another one-year training at the Junior Rate in Sacred Heart College, Shembaganur, Kodekanal in 1959. He then went on to do his degree at Loyola College, Madras and graduated with a Bachelor in Economics in 1963. He returned to Shembaganur to begin and complete his studies in philosophy for a further three years from 1963 to 1966. He was then posted to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 1966, I got the permission to go and do my one-year pastoral service in Malaysia. That's why 1966, I arrived in Kuala Lumpur and Bishop Madagan asked me to look out to the Indian communities living in the estates. So I served three parishes, Central Parish and St. Joseph's Church in Central Parish, Fatima Church in Brickfields, and Assumption in Tallingsha. One year I served teaching catechism, instructing people and so on. When Malaysia did not want the missionaries to come in to serve the Malaysian church, I was refused the permission. So God took me instead of going back to India, he took me to Indonesia. James was offered to continue his studies in theology at the St. Paul's Seminary in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. However, he did not get to complete his studies in Yogyakarta due to unforeseen circumstances. He returned to India in 1969 to complete his studies in theology at St. Mary's College, Krusyong, Darjeeling. Father James was ordained at Michael Puttenham on 27 December 1970. When he came after his ordination to the first Mass, that's the first time I met him. And uh, the kind of celebration that they had in the village, that attracted me very much. The first appointment came from a superior saying, we tried our level best to get you back to Malaysia, it looks impossible. But there is a demand for you in, from Medan. The Archbishop of Medan was asking for help. So we have decided to lend you to the Archdiocese to work there. That is how I landed in Medan. James was assigned to the Hayam Wuruk Parish, especially to help the Indian Catholic community there because of his experience and exposure in working with the Tamil Catholic communities in Malaysia and India. For a few months, I studied their situation and noticed that they have been there for more than 70 years, but the life has not improved. Not many have gone through the schools. Of course, during the 60s and so on, in general, Indonesia did not have that much of <clears throat> education for the children. So, so I thought of starting a school mainly for the Indian community, but for any other poor people can join. In 1973, with God helped me through generous souls uh, to collect some funds, and I founded a school, primary school, in the name of Kariya Dharma. The real challenge facing James was to improve the ghetto situation in Kampong Kristen. The first thing that he did was to educate them. He built a school in the vicinity known as Kariya Dharma. After three years in Medan, he then went for his tertianship, which is the last phase of Jesuit training to Columbia College in the United States from 1975 to 1976. 
he returned to Malaysia after completing his studies and pastoral work to take his final vows at the Church of St. Francis Xavier Petaling Jaya in 1977, the same church where he began his pastoral duties in Malaysia. In 1978, he went back to Maidan and started a project to relocate the families so that they would find suitable employment elsewhere. As long as they are going to live in that village, they can never improve their lives. They have to be spread out, live along with the other people, then see how they work for their living. Then that way they will have the spirit to come up in life. So I thought of a, buying a piece of land to away from the city and ask them whether they are willing to shift. I will build some houses and anybody willing to go there, I will give it free of charge. Nobody wanted to come because they were afraid going out of that place is like a fish out of water, no? They have to find their life difficult and so on, they refused. So they came to me, if you give us houses close to the city, and we are ready to move. So about eight people, eight families came. Then I bought a piece of land close to the, the, the outskirt of a city, new city. Built houses and gave them. Then when they shifted, I pulled down all the houses so that they may not come back again. Then afterwards, they were so much of opposition. They thought what I'm doing was uh, disfavor them, disservice to them. They have been happy with their situation as they were as it was. Now I'm coming to ask them to move and try to come up. They did not cover for it. So I had a lot of difficulties. Even people did, you know, disliked and so on. So finally, the bishop thought, I think you have done enough. Hmm? I will shift you to Banda Ache. At Yache, you go and stay, uh, work in Banda Ache. So in 1983, I left this uh, gave the the land I bought to the, to the bishop, then the school, everything to the bishop, I went to Jandri. Despite facing many challenges due to the political turmoil in Aceh at that time, James spent eight successful years promoting education and carrying out his spiritual mission. He built multiple kindergartens and schools in various districts in his parish. Towards the end of his mission in 1991, he was conferred the title Taku by the Achenis authorities for his contributions. The following year, there was an urgent need for missionaries to serve at a new Jesuit missionary post in Sarong Manokwari, Papua. James was the natural choice in view of his track record of pastoral work in Aceh. He served in Papua from 1992 to 1996 before he was posted back to Sumatra. I was asked to come back to Sumatra in 19, 1996. Then I became a rector in a small seminary the, uh, for the diocesan priests. So four years I spent training the candidates for the seminary. After I finished my work, I came back to the bishop saying, what do you want me to do? Then the bishop said, we have succeeded in clearing the village. Now they have formed a little group of uh, you know, their own community to help each other. They came to me to ask for, a, for some help. And they needed a hall where they can get together and so on. So would you build a hall for them? because we're remembering they are the source of the first Catholics here. So we'll give us something. Then I said, I am, uh, only hall I am not willing to do. There's not much of a service we can do. Supposing you allow me to build a shrine to Annevarankani, they have the devotion, well-known devotion, they live with the devotion. So when they come to meet together, we can at least give some formation in spiritual life. They will come, the prayer, then we can conduct them. When the bishop heard the name Velankani, immediately jumped upon the idea. He said, yes, we should have like this because I have been to Velankani some years ago and saw 
how much the, the piety is there, how much people come and pray and so on. Like that we should have here for the country. So I will give my blessing. You put up a shrine, along with the shrine, a hall for people to meet and so on. But I, I don't have the funds for it. So you what you have to do, you have to do, you raise the funds, plan the thing, you are completely uh, um, a freelance, no, no parish work will be given to you. But full time you look, you look after the project of putting up a shrine to Anne Verankani. Deep and strong faith to the Lord and to Holy Virgin Mary and the four support from beginning end it is a miracle in the sense I don't know the miracle self but seeing the building self it is a kind of miracle too. So I told the people, people were very enthusiastic then we started the process for applying. So at that time the regulation was, the, the government regulation was if you want to build a place of worship, you should have no objection um, letter from about 10 to 12 people, the residents around there. Then only you, you are qualified to apply. So I came and said, you see, since we are combining the hall and the worshiping place, we will give not a permit for the church, but for a multi-purpose building in which there will be a Bali Pratamwana, the community hall, and a place to pray and so on, the shrine. People are great. Then I sent in the uh, application, waiting and waiting for the uh, permit to come. And for a few months, we didn't hear anything. So I put up a small uh, chapel and asked our people to come and pray on Saturdays, every Saturday while I was building, uh, to pray for the permit to come. When I finished the little chapel, the permit came. So immediately I believe that God has blessed this project and He is going to do something great. So the invisible committee, building committee was, God is the chairman, Mary is the treasurer, I am the executor or the implementation man. Three of us. It is true, it's not, it's, I'm not joking. So I tell you, this is a miracle. God has worked. I am not an architect. I am not a builder, engineer and so on. But I trusted and believed that God wants to do something great. He has chosen me. So he has a mission for me. Then to fulfill that mission, God will give everything I want. The bishop believed it will happen. Nobody, no one else believed that it is going to happen because there is not building committee, where is the money is going to get, and all these things, you see. So that God, since God took charge of it, he had to do something to bring in the money. I went to my old parish in Bandache and told the people they are building this one. Please try to get a collection from among you so that you may have a share in that. So they did collect in cash and gave me 10 million in cash as their contribution. I took the money, came to Medan. So what I did, I wrapped the money in the paper, full scale paper, wrapped it again with a towel, put it in a plastic bag, they had a shopping bag, a plastic bag, and left it on my table in a house I used to stay in downtown. Uh, Jalan Kidiri, number 27, a uh, good friend of mine had made a provision for a room in his house in the first floor, uh, Mr. Savignano, yes. So, since before leaving Jakarta, I, I did not tell the people I have left the money in my room. I went only two days, I'm coming back, so I did not think that you need to know. After finishing my work, I was coming back. I was waiting for the flight to come back to him. I received a phone call early in the morning at 8 o'clock saying, Father, I have bad news for you. A fire started from your room at 2 o'clock in the morning, the 2nd of November 2002. And 
destroyed completely the floor where you are staying with your room. I saw inside the debris exactly in this place where the table was. I told him this, this is the this looks like the paper I wrapped the money with. So when I took it, it was in 10 million intact, not a single bill was burnt. We couldn't believe our eyes. So we started cleaning up other places where whatever is saved from, rescued from the fire. Everything was gone to fire. My clothes, my documents, the bills, everything, my books, all. But when we're cleaning up that area, there, two Bible and one hymnal was lying untouched by fire. They are not kept outside uh, apart from the books, but along with the books. That means the fire destroyed the books left and right, but left the Bible untouched by fire. So we could believe really immediately the local papers came, correspondents came, took photos and published it, the, the miracle. This Mary has come from India, Anivarankani. She is going to stay in Medan. They are building a house for her. This is the extraordinary event that happened. So, if anybody wants to help that project, please send your donations to this account number, the building account number. I will tell you, this is the work of God. Since I did not have a <clears throat> building committee to go and look for money, God has to provide all the money. So he did it, we believe it or not, since that time the money started flowing to the bank. And I never even thought of putting the budget. As long as God was providing me, I'll do as much beautiful as the house of Mary. That's what. And till the, the construction was over, the money was coming. One day at the end of the construction, when the church was blessed, I knew how much God sent through the bank. Half a million US dollars to complete his work. As soon as the church was blessed, immediately after a week, the money stopped coming. God provided all that I needed. He provided an engineer who came to offer his services free of charge. Four years he looked up to the structure. He just followed what I wanted. It's, he must be a very humble man to just to follow uh, an amateur, he doesn't know about the building, to design and he put the structure according to this one. So his name is Professor Dr. Engineer uh, Johannes Tarigan. He's a Catholic doctor. Is a professor at the Sumatra, not Sumatra University, in the Catholic University room. Is an expert on anti-earthquake buildings. Kami sebenarnya sudah kenal Father James sejak 40 tahun yang lalu. Tapi saat itu saya masih kecil di satu gereja namanya Hayamuruk. Tetapi setelah 15 tahun yang lalu. Kami ketemu lagi, dipertemukan oleh namanya Pastor Anthony Fazoli, di mana saat itu kami juga membangun gereja di Santo Prasiskus Asisi. Dan kami kenalan lagi dengan Pastor James. Nah, saat itu dia kasih konsep gambar. Nah, pada saat itu gambarnya itu kecil. Hanya seperti kuil kecil, terus ada geraha yang kecil. Tetapi, Setelah berjalan waktu, pastor selalu mau lebih besar, ya, lebih besar, lebih besar, lebih besar. Dan pada saat itu saya tahu persis pastor nggak ada uang. Ya gimana nanti kita bangun pastor? Nggak usah khawatir katanya. Nah setelah itu kami e, gambar yang lebih besar lagi. Nah sebelum jadi kami jalan ke India. Pastor punya inspirasi, saya mau seperti di India. Nah, kami jalan ke Madurai, jalan ke Trichy, jalan ke Chennai. Nah, yang terkesan itu di di Madurai itu ada suatu kuil yang besar. Nah, itulah simbol yang di atas itu. Ya, ada tujuh langkah step, ya kan? 
supaya menuju surga seperti itu. Nah, sepulang dari India kami final kan ini project dengan Pastor James uh, dengan uh, tim seadanya karena waktu itu panitia juga nggak nggak bisa berbuat apa-apa uh, uangnya juga nggak ada tapi dengan inspirasi dari Pastor James dengan uh, uh, memberikan penjelasan kepada umat baik di Indonesia maupun di Malaysia maupun di Singapura rasanya sih jadinya seperti ini seperti itu nah ini kami hitung dengan waktu itu ada gempa di Aceh tahun 2000 oh, 2004 ya kan nah ini bangunan nggak apa-apa ya kan terus kemudian ada gempa yang besar lagi di eh, di Nias itu juga nggak apa-apa jadi tahan bangunan ini sudah ditahan sudah diuji eh, mungkin Tuhan juga lah yang memberikan inspirasi kepada kami dengan Pastor James God has prepared the boy to do the artwork God brought him to me showed me and I found in him the talents to paint and do little uh, toys and so on. Immediately I used him to beautify this building with the ornament, the paintings, uh, the, the sculpture, uh, the murals and so on, everything was. You won't believe the whole thing that is in this uh, Graha Maria is the single boy's work. I did not employ anybody else. Alone he did. So all these things show this Graha Maria is not an ordinary place. It is God's own chosen place. Pertama kali saya kenal Father James melalui suatu lukisan di Triplek untuk dihadiahkan pada ulang tahun Bunda Maria. Kemudian beliau bertanya siapa yang melukis. Dia menyuruh orang yang datang kemari. Barulah saya berjumpa dengan Father James. Kemudian Father James menyuruh saya membuat satu patung malaikat sebagai bahan percobaan. Dari itulah pekerjaan berkembang terus-menerus sampai sekarang. Untuk lukisan di langit-langit, dari ujung ke ujung, memakan waktu enam bulan. Patung-patung, satu patung sekitar satu minggu. Saya mulai bekerja di Pelangkani ini sekitar umur 21, 21 tahun. Tempat ini sangat sakral, artinya suci. Dan kita kalau datang kemari bisa menenangkan jiwa kita, hati, pikiran, perbuatan kita pun berubah. After years of hard work, the magnificent church was planned, designed and built through divine providence. God guided James every step of the way. Aneve Langani was by his side too. In the words of James, I am just a small chisel in the hands of God, the master sculptor. I was brought by God as a missionary to proclaim the good news to these people. I am not going to be living all the time. So I thought, supposing I could build a church with, which contains the message I wanted to explain, it will take my place even when I'm gone. For that, one of the beautiful prayers of St. Ignatius helped me. I am a Jesuit father, so we were trained in, in the exercise of, spiritual exercise of Ignatius. And we have to do a daily meditation and contemplation. So for the past almost 40, more than 40 years, I have been contemplating the, uh, the mystery of God becoming man and saving mankind. And now he is in glory, how he's going to come back at the end of time, all this. So I, that flashed as a idea to be executed in the architecture. So I took that then followed word by word what Ignatius says in that one. And then I started developing that idea. That means I had to make this church as a symbolic church. Through symbols, it must explain the message it contains. So I thought heaven and earth meet here. 
God Almighty wants to meet His people irrespective of race, religion or anything. One God. So how could it represent heaven? How could it represent world in architecture? So I, I will take the Indo-Mughal architecture combined. Hindu Islamic architecture, we have a lot of them in India, in Malaysia, the British colonies, very service. The church entrance is styled very much like the Ruma Adat of the Bataks. The sculptures of people of different races and cultures on the walls surrounding the Graha Maria symbolizes unity and is a sign that everyone is welcome to the Graha Maria Ane Velangani. The asphalt road at the entrance is in the shape of a man. It depicts that man enters this shrine in his darkness, sinfulness and ignorance and comes with his arms outstretched seeking the glory of God. This fountain located outside the church is a reminder that the teachings of Jesus is the living water that leads to eternal life. A week after the blessing of the church, the little chapel floor started flooding with water. At that time, the chapel ground level and the chapel, uh, church level it was different, almost three feet different. So we have to go down to pray in the chapel at that time. So when the chapel floor started flooding, I was wondering where was the water coming from. Because of the uh, uh, different level, I thought maybe the rain water seeps through that and floods. So I pulled off the old floor, raised the floor, refilling the soil, and put a new floor. Flooding stopped, but it never got tired. Always it's watering. So every day the sisters have to mop up the thing to take the water away. I was wondering what's happening, so I called a couple of water diviners to come and see whether there is any source of water close by the chapel, why it is flooding. Both of them went round and round and finally showed the altar of Mary in the chapel. See, below the altar there seems to be a source of water. Since I did not want to pull down the altar just to take the water, I, I tried to bore a well just outside the chapel, very deep level, 70 meters we put the bore well, but the water was clear, the color is very good, but when we tasted, it, it was very a, a bad taste. There is, a, there is a certain smell. So we closed it and the sisters were mopping up on me. What happened? It is not by coincidence or by an accident. God's own plan, I think. Exactly two o'clock in the morning, 2nd of November, 2005. You remember the first miracle took place? Two o'clock in the morning, 2nd of November, 2002. The accidental house fire. Three years later, exactly at 2 o'clock in the morning, 2nd of November 2005, I was so anxious about it, I could not get a wing of sleep. I was rolling in bed. Then I started hearing voices. Scratch the ground below the feet of Mary in the chapel. Scratch the ground below the feet of Mary in the chapel. It was repeating and repeating. Early in the morning when I got up, I called the uh, gardener to break open the floor below the altar and see what. So he broke open the door, opened the floor, took out the ref refilled soil and scratched a little bit. He shouted, Father, the washer is that water is gushing to come out. Then I only realized that was the way, first reason why it was flooding. Still, I was not convinced that it is the spring water, maybe stagnant water. How much volume we can have that water to find out? Asked him to dig a well as deep as four meters. Then the water, the well will be filled in water. Several times he emptied the water to see whether it's a source of water. When the well is empty, it will fill in. But it will not overflow. 
it will stop where it showed in the first, first place. The crystal clear water, no smell, when I tasted, tasted good, then I believed. God what this miracle to show that He will be present here for anybody who thirsts in life. Come and He will give living water to him. So God's presence is symbolized in the holy water. So when, when I saw the water is good, before announcing to the people about the discovery, I took the sample and sent it to the water department to have the lab tests. After doing every test, they said it is pure and simple spring water, no contamination found, so you can take straight away even without boiling it. When people heard about it, they came in great number to take water from the uh, uh, spring, uh, that uh, altar near the altar. Finally, nobody was praying. So finally, I decided to pull down the altar, uh, push it back, and close the well, and pump the water to the reservoir. Then from there, we direct it to the taps we, uh, at the back of the church. The unique ascending ramps leading to the church, similar to the ones in the Basilica of Our Lady of Lutz in France, symbolizes Mary extending her outstretched welcoming arms to all who come to her. The ramp has a balustrade that is covered with paintings of the creation of Adam and Eve as told in the book of Genesis. The ramp is also lighted with 40 lamps for those who are seeking God shall not walk in darkness. It also symbolizes the 40 days of fasting Jesus underwent and the journey of the Israelites to the promised land which lasted 40 years. The crosses embedded on the ramps seek to remind pilgrims that the quest to heaven is filled with trials and tribulations which must be faced and overcome with penance and charity. The seven-story steeple is representative of Hindu architecture whilst the domes are fashioned according to Mughal architecture. The number seven represents heaven according to the Western, Hindu and Muslim cultures. The seven stories in Hindu architecture represents the king's dome. A great example is the Raja Gopuram to show that the building is majestic and divine. The three domes represent the Blessed Trinity, God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The world is not, the world is in a perfect place. The perfect place to represent is number seven is a perfect number. So I chose a seven-story temple. We call in India, it's a royal temple, a royal temple. In the same way, uh, every religion, every culture accepts as the seven is a perfect number, like seven days in a week. Seven colors in rainbow, seven notes in music, and religious-wise, the uh, seven sacraments in the Catholic Church, seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and seven wonders of the world, and all these things. Even the Buddhist thing, the seventh stage of is Nirvana. Yes, and the Hindu usually the seventh world will be this heaven and so on. So this gives very symbolically speaks it's heaven. Graha Maria comprised of two floors. The ground floor, styled according to Islamic architecture, is the symbol of earth, where people of all faith gather in brotherhood. The two banana trees placed on the entrance hall symbolically represents life without end and an everlasting salvation to all those who seek refuge in the Lord Jesus. The first floor is the church proper, a place for prayer and veneration. At the entrance stands the statues of two great persons, St. Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles, the great preacher and missionary, and St. Francis Xavier, 
a Jesuit missionary honoured as the Apostle of Asia, who in his travels had visited Indonesia. The whole church rests on 12 columns. This is a symbol of Christ's church that was built on the foundations of the 12 Apostles. On the top of each column, the statue of one of the Apostles is standing as its guardian. The beautiful paintings done by the young man Andreas decorate the entire interior of the church. The eight steps ascending to the altar symbolize the eight Beatitudes, the eight distinctive sayings of Jesus in the Sermon of the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 311. These Beatitudes are written on the wall of the altar in different languages. Meanwhile, on both sides of the church, there are stained glass windows depicting the mysteries of the Rosary and the 14 Stations of the Cross. The colours of the church were also God-inspired and represents the journey of man from darkness to the glory of God. There are seven colours which is the same as the rainbow. This monument was built in commemoration of the late Pope John Paul II who died in 2005. The world has known him as a person who was much devoted to Our Lady. To give a little sense of a mini pilgrimage to the Holy Land, so first we say if you want to meet Jesus, you have to go to Bethlehem where he was born. So I made a miniature Bethlehem with children's park there that you will see there. Then once you see meet Jesus at Bethlehem, Jesus tells his the pilgrims, Why oh, don't don't you remember I promised you I am with you in the church? So go from Bethlehem to Rome. Rome represents the church, uh, church of Christ in, uh, uh, for the Catholics. So that also I took it to a little uh, miniature Roman architecture and built a chapel for John, St. John Paul II. It is a great mon monument for the, the Pope because he visited this area in 1989 when he visited to Indonesia, Medan, and we met him in this district, at Medan Tuntungan. Our place is a part of the Medan Tuntungan uh, district. So I gave him this as a monument uh, in remembrance of his 25th year of his visit to Indonesia. Then put up the little uh, plot or the statue in front of the ch uh, chapel. So from there, from Bethlehem, people can go to Rome. He is a great lover of Mary. That's why he is given the uh, title, a Marian Pope. So this also helped me to say the pilgrimage, lead the pilgrimage. When people visit his, his chapel and pray to him, John Paul will tell them, well, I know you come to me because I know Jesus, but I know there is someone who knows Jesus better than myself. So go to his mother, and the mother will tell you who Jesus is. So he will send from Rome to Nazareth. So the Chapel of Mary is a symbol of Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. So people, when they go and meet Mary and pray to her in Nazareth, Mary will tell, my dear children, my son is in the sacrament. Israel presence in the church. Please go to the church to see him, meet him. So the church represents Jerusalem. The replica of the shrine is only made in 2016. I saw in one of the parishioners' house a replica of the ship that was thrown from out of the sea by the tsunami, which was standing on the roadside. 
So somebody made that replica of the ship so beautifully and he won a prize in the competition in Aceh. So when I saw him, I said, oh, you are a great uh, artist, you can make this. Can you make a, the shrine, a yes, replica of the shrine? Immediately accepted that one, he said, even though he has not come and visited this place. So he said, Father, when you go back to Medan, send me the plan or the blueprint of the thing and some pictures. I will try to construct. So I said, without coming and looking at this, for one year he worked on it tirelessly and created such a marvelous piece. The Graha is dedicated to Our Lady of Velangani. This is the story of how the statue miraculously found its way to Medan on the day the foundation stone was laid for the building of Graha Maria Ane Velangani. Supposing that is going to be a bigger church, the statue we have in the chapel is very small, not too fitting. So we bought a bigger life-size statue of Ane Velangani in Chennai Adayar uh, Church and asked my relatives to send it by cargo so that it can come before the putting the foundation stone from India. I fixed the blessing of the little chapel and also putting the, laying the foundation stone on the birthday of Mary, 8th of September. Every year the Catholic Church celebrates Mary's birthday. In India also at the same time. So we fixed 8th of September to the chapel to be blessed as well as the laying the foundations. We are waiting and waiting for a few months, never heard about the news that the statue is coming. So the, I said then in that case we will start a special novena prayers, nine days continuous prayer for this intention. So that Mary can come from India for the feast. We prayed and prayed and prayed. When the, pray the novena was over, no news from India. So people started grumbling, our father, we did not uh, get our favor and so on. I told them, maybe we know, do know what God thinks about. What we can do is, we can simulate her arrival coming from India to Indonesia by taking the small statue from the chapel, decorate it in a sapram, in a car, then bring her in procession from the main road to this place where we are going to lay the foundation stone. Imagining that Mary started the journey already from India and has come to our place. So we put up an open stage, open air stage. There we put a small stool. In case she comes, she will put her there. Everything was fixed, it's five o'clock in the evening. The procession will start and six o'clock is the Mass. You won't believe, four o'clock that day, suddenly I received a phone call from the airport in Polonia, that was old airport, saying, a statue has come from India, come and collect it. We couldn't be I couldn't believe my ears. How is it possible there was no news from India? No one has informed us that she is coming, and she has arrived. So immediately we looked for a pickup and picked her up from the airport and she arrived in the nick of time just an hour before the feast. So everybody was happy, it's a miracle that God has done and so on. So we had that one. I pray that God bless him, bless the people who are around him, bless his family, and that God may continue to do great things through him, in him, and for all. Yepudi Uvarundu Valkire Andrade Vartile Katnaro upon the Katonda Asiad and Sul Karya the Katonda Pari Makatumbu and Asiad Vandamandano Vandana Katundan Asiad Bill. Ade Mari Urde Valkia Asiad in the one day. Our Rudaya Pani our Rudaya Arvum our Rudu Bade Aki Vellam in a Mikha Adiyamah Kavanta the Enter Korla Tanuda Yelam Vaidale, our 
மறைபரப்பு பணியிலே ஆர்வம் கொண்டவராக கிறிஸ்துவை அறியாத மக்களுக்கு கிறிஸ்துவை அறிவிக்க வேண்டும் என்று ஆர்வம் கொண்டவராக அவர் தன்னுடைய சொந்த நாட்டையும் தன்னுடைய மக்களையும் உறவுகளையும் விட்டு பிரிந்து அவர் மலேசியா மற்றும் இந்தோனேஷியா நாடுகளுக்கு சென்று அவர் நற்செய்தி பணி அறிவித்திருப்பது என்பது எங்கள் எல்லாருக்கும் பெருமையாக இருக்கிறது அதே வேளையில் எங்கள் எல்லாருக்கும் அது ஒரு மிகச்சிறந்த எடுத்துக்காட்டாகவும் இருக்கிறது இறுதி வரை இறைவனுக்காக செவி செய்து அவர் நல்ல சுகத்தோடு இருக்க ஒவ்வொரு நாளும் அவருக்காக ஜெபித்து அந்த மக்கள் அனைவரும் இறைவனிடமிருந்து பெற்றுக்கொண்ட எல்லா நல்ல வரங்களை மற்றவர்களோடு பரிமாறி அவர்களும் இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு மிஷினரி வேதத்தை போதிக்கும் மக்களாக வர வேண்டும் என்பது தான் என்னுடைய ஆர்வம் ஆசை நல்ல தந்தை இறைவனுக்கு மாதாவுடைய பெயரால் அவரை வாழ்த்துகிறேன் தொடர்ந்து அவருடைய பணி சிறக்கணும் அவரும் நானும் ஒரே வயது அப்படி இருக்கிறதுனால அவரும் நாங்களும் எல்லாம் நல்லா இருக்கணும் சிறப்பாக இருக்கணும் மாதாவினுடைய போ புகழை இன்னும் பல வருடங்கள் பரப்ப வேண்டும் என்று தேவ அன்னையினிடத்தில் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஆசிரியர் அவங்க எங்கே பணி செஞ்சாங்களோ எப்படி இருக்கணும்னு நீங்கள் நினைக்கிறீங்களோ அன்னவரை அப்படியே நீங்கள் காட்டுங்க Ane Velangani has been a pilgrimage destination for people from all around the world. They all come to witness the diversity and the miracles of Ane Velangani. The Marian shrine of Ane Velangani, Graha Maria Ane Velangani is a place for everyone. It's a home of Mary, Graha Anybody who wants to experience God have a spiritual experience can come and come and see and experience because the atmosphere is for God experience and peace and joy will be in the gift of visiting this Graha Maria never uncanny irrespective of race religion color language you come you are most welcome come and experience god in this place and mary will help you to experience that God's dream has come true.